Welcome back, everyone, to our classroom, once again called the College of Glycation. I am Paul Reynolds. I'm a biomedical scientist and also a professor of cell biology. And today's episode is one I've been looking forward to for quite a while because it brings together three of the most foundational topics in metabolic health, glycation, mitochondria, and cellular energy metabolism. If you've ever felt chronically tired, had unexplained brain fog, struggled with blood sugar, or just sensed that your body isn't running as smoothly as it should, this episode is for you. Because at the root of these causes is a kind of biomedical, biochemical sabotage, and glycation is one of the saboteurs. Now, if you've been following the podcast to this point, you already know about glycation, your experts. But for those that are new, this is the process where sugar molecules like glucose or fructose bind without requiring an enzyme to molecules in the body like fats and proteins and DNA. This is a sticky, damaging reaction that leads to the formation of ages or advanced glycation end products. And these ages accumulate in tissues over time and disrupt the structure and function at the molecular level. In previous episodes, we've explored how glycation drives insulin resistance, vascular damage, and most recently, metabolic syndrome. But today we're diving into new terrain. We're going inside the mitochondria. These are the power plants of your cells. And we're going to explore how glycation cripples energy production at the very root level of metabolism. So let's start with the basics. Every single one of your cells, except red blood cells, contains mitochondria. These are small bean-shaped structures that are responsible for producing a molecule called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. ATP is the energy currency of the body. It powers everything, muscle contractions, nerve impulses, enzyme reactions, immune responses, the blinking of your eyes, and even the repair of your DNA. Everything you can imagine is coordinated, if energy is essential, by ATP. Mitochondria make ATP in a process that is highly regulated. And how they'll do that generally is by oxidizing fuels, mainly fatty acids and glucose. These fuels enter the mitochondria and go through a series of chemical reactions known as the TCA cycle or the Krebs cycle, as well as the electron, electron transport chain. Through this beautifully organized process, Electrons are stripped from the fuel, passed along a chain of protein complexes, and ultimately used to pump protons across the mitochondrial membrane. This resulting proton gradient drives the final step in the process, the payoff, the making of ATP. But mitochondria aren't just power plants, although they do that roll very well. They're also central command hubs for cell survival, aging, and metabolic regulation. They determine how efficiently our bodies burn fat or sugar, how we manage oxidative stress, and even when a damaged cell should commit suicide, a process called apoptosis. Healthy mitochondria are central to healthy aging and resilience. And this is where glycation becomes such a critical threat. Glycation doesn't just stiffen blood vessels, for instance, or mess with insulin signaling. It directly targets mitochondria. One of the ways glycation does this is by modifying mitochondrial proteins, especially those in the electron transport chain. These proteins are essential for shuttling electrons and maintaining the flow of energy. When they become glycated, they don't fold properly. They lose function and they start to leak electrons abnormally. And when electrons leak, they react with oxygen and form reactive oxygen species or ROS. 
That's the biological equivalent of a short circuit. These ROS molecules cause oxidative damage inside the mitochondria, leading to a breakdown in efficiency and eventually mitochondrial death. This phenomenon was elegantly demonstrated in a 2008 study by Rocha and Hopel, who showed that mitochondrial dysfunction in diabetes is linked to alterations in the structure and the activity of those mitochondrial proteins, largely due to glycation and oxidative stress. In diabetic models, mitochondria become swollen, fragmented, and less able to produce ATP. What's even more alarming is that the mitochondria themselves can, in fact, become glycated. In 2017, there was a study that showed ages accumulate directly in the membranes of mitochondrial organelles, and therefore it impairs their structure and reduces ATP synthesis. This study provided evidence that age buildup in the inner mitochondrial membrane compromised the electrochemical gradient, effectively choking the mitochondria's ability to do their job. And this isn't just happening in diabetics. Even in so-called healthy aging, the mitochondrial age burden will increase over time, contributing to the decline in cellular energy that we associate with fatigue, muscle loss, brain fog, and metabolic slowdown we encounter as we age. So let's zoom out for a moment. One of the most profound insights over the past two decades in biology, I believe, is that mitochondrial dysfunction is central to aging and chronic disease. One of those papers was published in 2013, and this landmark review on the hallmarks of aging was very important. Among the key drivers, mitochondrial dysfunction. And more recent studies have shown that glycation can accelerate virtually every one of these hallmarks, from telomere shortening to stem cell exhaustion. Now you might ask, why do mitochondria become such easy targets? Well, it turns out that mitochondrial proteins have long lifespans and very limited repair mechanisms. Unlike other cellular components, mitochondria are particularly vulnerable because they generate heat. They use high energy electrons and they sit near constant oxidative activity. When ages form in or around mitochondria, they create a bottleneck in the energy system, like sugar that gums up the gears of a finely tuned machine. In one study published in the journal Free Radical Biology and Medicine, this was published in 2012, the authors showed that glycation precursors like methylglyoxal, which is a byproduct of glucose metabolism, can directly damage mitochondrial DNA and its enzymes. This is especially concerning because methylglyoxal can spike rapidly in response to high blood sugar, and it doesn't take much to disrupt mitochondrial function. So here we are. Glycation damages mitochondrial proteins, disrupts electron transport, increases ROS formation, and interferes with ATP production. This is the metabolic equivalent of trying to run a city's power grid while sabotaging nearly every transformer. The lights dim, the machines sputter, and the backup systems begin to fail. So let's talk about how this shows up in real life. Well, one major symptom is fatigue, a kind of persistent cellular level of exhaustion. When mitochondria can't process enough ATP, the body prioritizes energy for essential functions and everything else will suffer. This is one reason why people with metabolic syndrome or diabetes often report low energy, difficulty in concentrating, and poor exercise tolerance. Another effect is 
metabolic inflexibility. That's the inability to switch between burning carbohydrates and fat, depending on what is available. Mitochondria are responsible for this switch. When they are damaged, the body becomes stuck in a sugar-burning mode, even when fasting or exercising. And that was shown in 2016 in a paper that was published, which explored how mitochondrial dysfunction limits fatty acid oxidation, leading to the accumulation of fat in tissues and worsening insulin resistance. And the consequences really do extend beyond the muscles. In the brain, mitochondrial glycation has been linked to neurodegenerative diseases. We began to see that more clearly about a decade and a half ago. There was a study published in 2010 in which the authors found mitochondrial dysfunction induced by ages played a significant role in Alzheimer's disease progression, reducing ATP production in neurons and increasing oxidative stress. The brain, as you know, is a massive energy consumer burning about 20% of the body's ATP. And when energy drops, cognition will suffer. There's also evidence that glycation reduces mitochondrial biogenesis. That's the process of making new mitochondria. We can see that clearly years ago in a publication dated 2006, where the authors showed that age accumulation downregulated a marker called PGC1-alpha. PGC1-alpha is a master regulator of mitochondrial growth and function, further compounding the energy deficit. But not all is lost. As you know from these episodes, there are ways to reverse these outcomes. There are actionable steps that we can take to protect our mitochondria and reduce the burden of glycation. The most obvious place to start is by lowering your blood sugar excursions. This can be done with low glycemic eating, intermittent fasting on occasion, and carbohydrate moderation. The less sugar circulating in the blood, the less glycation will occur. And fewer glycation reactions mean healthier mitochondria. Another powerful tool that we've covered in the past is exercise, particularly high intensity and resistance training. Exercise stimulates mitochondrial biogenesis, the making of new mitochondria, and it increases the expression of enzymes that can detoxify glycation precursors like methylglyoxal. There was a paper published just a decade ago in 2014, and the authors showed that regular exercise upregulated glyoxylase 1. That's an enzyme responsible for neutralizing methylglyoxal, a glycation intermediate. And this study showed that you can do this by improving mitochondrial function in your skeletal muscle. We can also support our mitochondria with nutrients like alpha-lipoic acid, magnesium, carnitine, and B vitamins, all of which play very helpful roles in mitochondrial metabolism and defense against oxidative stress. But lifestyle is the real medicine here. Mitochondria respond to challenges. They grow and adapt when we ask them to do more, not less. In closing, the story of glycation and mitochondria is one of invisible sabotage. It is slow, insidious, and under the radar until it's not. Until you're tired all the time, until your metabolism slows to a crawl, until your brain feels foggy and your muscles feel weak. But with awareness comes power. So when you understand how glycation damages mitochondria and collapses your cellular energy, you can take steps to interrupt the process and rebuild. You don't have to accept declining energy or premature aging. You can support your mitochondria, those ancient symbionts inside your cells, 
and help your body generate clean, efficient energy every day. Thanks one and all for listening. By managing blood sugar, eating smart, staying active, you can keep glycation in check and your mitochondria firing on all cylinders. Finally, as always, stay curious. Keep learning about your metabolic health. Knowledge can lead you to more effective ways to stay energetic and metabolically efficient. Thanks again for joining me today. I'll see you next time.